Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones is that show where you can sit down and you can watch 40, 45 minutes of straight dialogue. Just straight dialogue, straight character interactions, and not be able to stop looking at the screen. Like, yo, <laughs> nothing dope happened until like the last five minutes. I would say nothing dope, nope, nothing super dope happened until the last five minutes, right? So from the beginning, we knew that Allison was 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 on some just some awkward shit where she's like oh, the king died and told me that my son Aegon should be king he didn't really say your son I like I okay, for whatever reason this is the throne that Allison has decided to die on this is the hill she's chosen to die on which is I feel as though like she's just sacrificed so much in the last few years she's just been pushing and beating on the drum of my kids have got to be the, the the heirs to the iron throne it can't be rhaenyra that once a pretense a pretense fell into her lap no matter how flimsy no matter how bullshit it was which i like the fact that the old fucking guy was like you like 30 years old i'm like 400 i grew up with viserys we grew up on the same block Okay, me and him was cool since we was kids. There's no way off the random he'd have had 500 lords and knights swear loyalty to Rhaenyra and then on his deathbed, he gonna whisper to you talking about my son should be king. I really felt as though if like that old dude had kept on talking, that old dude would have probably been like, um, which Aegon? We talking about your Aegon or we talking about Rhaenyra's Aegon? Because there's multiple Aegons in this rotation at the moment. There's, there's there's the elder and there's the younger. The elder is just whoring his way through 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 Silk Road and 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 through Flea Bottom, while the younger is literally in his crib chilling on Dragonstone. Who's the heir that Viserys told you should be taken over? But I like how they also changed a few things from the book in this scene in particular, because in this in this scene in the book, it's written that uh. Kristen Cole walks up behind that guy, slits his throat, and then just pushes his head down onto the, the table. I kind of like the fact that you see Kristen cracking at the seams. Still, like, that dude's constitution is weak as fuck. Like, Kristen Cole is every bad apple police officer you've ever heard of, like, who's committed a crime. Where it's just like, the dude's always shaking. Like, like he's always on the verge where he's just twitching and he can't control his fucking emotions. It's like, you're a Kingsguard. You're an anointed knight. You've seen combat. Relax. You're in a fucking boardroom. Like, there aren't going to be ninja assassins jumping out the fucking woodworks attempting to attack you. But he is always on edge. And you see him snap and slam the dude's head on the table and the dude dies. Which, I also appreciate the fact that the... the the commander of the king's guard draws his sword and tells him to stand down and Kristen draws his sword and it's like <laughs> which sidebar my man uh what is it, it I, I can't remember his name the lannister twin like he just instantaneously gets up like he just he just gets up and he just like shimmies right out of right out of frame and the second they put their swords away he just slides right back in and sits down i was like that is a man who knows how to survive like, he saw the conflict and was like, mm, in case these motherfuckers start fighting, I'm gonna stand over there. And then the second the fighting was over, he was like, let me reassume my seat back over here. But that entire scene is fantastic because now, instead of it feeling like a one-day coup, which, which the books kind of make it feel like, yes, in the books it sets up that the Greens had been working towards putting Aegon on the throne for like a really long time. But for the most part, this really shows that Otto and the Greens were basically working behind the scenes without Alicent's knowledge, where they were making deals and everyone who was on the council was basically in on it. And then you see Otto basically clamp down on the castle, where he arrests all the servants, all the maids, anybody who's not a guard, puts them in the cell. 
then he gets all the lords that are currently at king's landing and he's like y'all motherfuckers either swear fealty or you go into the cells too and the ones who are like no i swore loyalty to rainier and i'm not going to be an oath breaker they get sent to the fucking dungeons my one boy he he knelt and then he tried to sneak on out of there and and, and Larry's clubfoot oh i got a tangent for that motherfucker right there i've got a tangent for Larry's clubfoot because we're about to change his fucking name quentin fucking tarantino apparently took over the soul of 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 loris clubfoot and inserted himself into this episode of house of the dragon because i did not see the feet thing coming i didn't see the feet situation coming at all the feet situation completely fucking caught me off guard that came out of left field because when allison sat down and put her feet on the thing i was like what's happening here but then as it proceeded and it continued and she took off the stockings and then i was like yo he has a foot fetish the club foot has a foot fetish the club foot likes feet why didn't i see that coming like out of all the kinks he could have had why did i not see him being attracted to feet as the one that was gonna come why did that surprise me but then my man just starts like sh- sh- whacking the meat <laughs> sir this is why you're attracted to this is why you've been sniffing around her these last three episodes following her fucking everywhere is because you have a foot fetish and apparently she has perfect feet when did quentin tarantino sneak his way into this show because I feel as though we need to call the Scooby gang so they can unmask his ass and take that mask that he's wearing off and be like, no, Tarantino, take your ass back to your own films and do that shit over here. Because I did not see that coming at all. But following that, there are great character interactions. So the twins, which is Eric and Eric, which is Eric with an E and Eric with an A. Um, I like their conversation because it's one twin who knows what's going on and the other twin being kept in the dark and i believe it's the twin that it's the twin that uh isn't was it the twin that isn't i i can't tell the the difference to be quite honest i know one of the twin leaves uh because he's supposed to be rhaenyra's like sworn shield and he's gonna go to rhaenyra I'm probably gonna have to rewatch the episode, but I had a feeling, and I might be wrong on this, so comment down below and let me know if I'm wrong. I had a feeling that the twin that was the guardian of Aegon was like, this motherfucker ain't worth it, man. Like, the fuck are we doing? Like, why are we why are we trying to make this motherfucker king? Like, look at him. Like, all he does is drugs and rape women. Why would we support him being on the Iron Throne? And then the brother is like, nah, man, we got to support him being on the Iron Throne because, you know, we're King's Guard and we got to do whatever the king says. And it's like, yeah, but the, the commander of the King's Guard said it the best. He was like, I take orders from the king. And until there's a king, you can't tell me shit. Which is what the rest of the King's Guard should have basically done. Which is like, y'all are just the council. Y'all can't tell me shit. Like, Chris and Cole may be on your side, but the other five of us, like, why would we, why would we join y'all? This, this is treason. Cross the board 100%. This is treason. Because the King's Guard that were there also swore to Rhaenyra, which would make them all Oathbreakers, which is another fan- fantastic thing about how uh, people talk out of both sides of their mouths on this show, where they're all about honor and knighthood and my, my vows and blah, 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 as, as Kristen Cole. But then he does the complete opposite of his vows when he he beats to death and kills like innocent people and it's like yeah but that's not really like living up to your fucking vows you're just a piece of shit you're hiding behind your honor to hide the fact that you're fucking trash and it's the same thing with like uh allison where allison hides behind her religion but you're here showing your feet to the guy who you know is gonna beat his dick and give you that information (laughs) one and one ain't adding up to three chief but we skip forward and there's a great conversation between uh chris and cole and uh amon where amon's like the fuck i look like me putting him on the throne and you can see chris and cole agrees with him but he's not gonna go against otto and he's definitely not gonna go against allison's wishes which is like chris and cole sitting there and he's like this motherfucker is spitting like he be training he be reading he be studying 
he be fighting he got a level fucking head this 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 one eyed motherfucker may be the best person to take over and be king but then at the exact same time i swore the oath to your mama and i i i i i can't go with what you're doing and then that that scene continues later on when Eamon goes to get Aegon and they're having like their little back and forth and Aegon's like look bruh just like just let me go let me get on a ship and let me sail across the fucking ocean and you will never see me again and you can take the crown and you can be fucking king because I don't want it and you see the gears turning in Aemon's head he's like I should let this motherfucker go but can't and he ends up taking him back to the fucking castle I really feel as though Aemon fucked up I think I think there are characters in this show who would make great kings. And there are always circumstances that occur that keep them away from that realm of power. For Daemon, it was Viserys. Daemon loved him. Like, I love the fact that the most recent episodes have shown just how much he actually loved and cared for cared for Viserys. But then on the opposite side, you have Aemon. Aemon doesn't love Aegon. Like, he doesn't love Aegon at all. There, there isn't that same brotherly bond that bonds both Viserys and, and Daemon. But at the exact same time, Aemon's not going to go against the plan that's currently in motion because he's loyal to the crown, which is super fucking weird. It's like, yes, Aemon is like, he out there. He is insane. And he's going to do whatever the fuck he wants. But at the exact same time, he's loyal to, to the Targaryen family. He's loyal to his family. And he's not going to stab his family in the back, even if he doesn't fucking like them, which is an interesting little twist for his character. But then you see uh, Aegon essentially get crowned. And at first, he's really sheepish as he's walking up to the, 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 the throne inside of the dragon pit. And they place the crown upon his head. He's anointed by the Seven. And... He turns around and I kind of feel as though it's like reluctance from him. He's like, these fucking people don't want me to be king. But then they start cheering and his entire disposition changes. He's like, oh, these motherfuckers love me. <laughs> He's like, is this what you want? <laughs> I'm your, <laughs> like, who's your king? Who's your daddy? Who is now sitting on this throne? Who is the best thing you've ever seen since motherfucking sliced bread? Me, Aegon II, out here chilling. And then everything instantaneously goes to shit because my girl Rainies was like, was like, you ain't shit at all. She makes the most, she makes the best fucking entrance ever. She popped out of the fucking ground like a goddamn diglet. Her her dragon popped out of the ground like a fucking Doug Drio in Pokemon. Popped right on out and just started swatting people away. That's definitely gonna have like major complications later on down the line in regards to all the people that died in that fucking dragon pit during the crowning that's going to make people feel a certain type of way which is also going to be the which is going to give the dance of dragons its flip title which is the uh the death of dragons because they they oh boy that's going to lead to a storming that's going to lead to a storming later on and that ain't going to be a pretty sight it's, it's going to land in rainice's lap for basically how she handled like that entire situation but i love the fucking stare down i love the fact that she's just like sitting there on the fucking dragon and then like it's like slowly moving forward and allison steps forward and the dragon opens up its mouth and in that moment for a split second this is why i love this fucking show for a split second i thought she was gonna barbecue them and we were just gonna <laughs> divergent timeline like we were about to enter universe two where like the original Game of Thrones series never happened, the blacks automatically won, and we were just seeing a completely new universe. But then she spins around on the dragon, leaves them be, and she rockets off into the sky, and there's like a level of relief on like everyone's faces that they didn't fucking die. I love that shit. I love when, when the, vi well, I wouldn't even really say villains, because we haven't seen the villainous shit from the blacks yet. Even though I'm team black, we, we, we gonna get down to some nefarious shit. We gonna get down to some nefarious shit. But at the exact same time, I love when a party is triumphant and they're looking around and they're like, we've fucking won. We have conquered. We've done it all. We now sit upon the throne. We hold all the power. And in that split second, 
the opposite faction shows up and the people who thought that they won realize fuck like if these people wanted to if it wasn't for the fact that they granted us mercy we'd all be fucking dead right now so there's a chance that i feel as though rainies is going to end up regretting the fact that she let them live which she's probably flying to rainier right now to tell rainier what happened because they do not know damon and rainier are basically chilling on dragonstone no clue as to what the fuck is going on all the way over here in king's landing but i feel as though like once they once they figure it out the war begins baby because i know the next episode this episode was team green focused the next episode is going to be team black focused and i hear some fucked up shit so what's happening at the end of the episode so we'll see next week next week is going to be a banger of a fucking ending i'm going to absolutely fucking enjoy it. but yeah that's it for our review of uh episode eight episode nine we up there we up there somewhere it's going to be in the title hey let me know what you guys think if you fucking enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one peace